Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here in Nolens for SC14. I'm here with Mark O'Connor from Millennia. How you doing, Mark? Hey, I'm doing good, thanks. Rich, how are you? Great, great, great. In fact, you know, uh, it's been a while since we talked, and I thought, why don't you show me what this new Forge thing is about? I wanna, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm really curious. What, what does it do? What does it do? So we've had DDT and MAP as integrated um, profiling and debugging in a uh, kind of combined interface to make it easy to use for quite a while now. Yes. Um, Forge is the new name for this combined entity of these two things, put two pieces put together, because it's the one place that developers can really come to make their code better. Okay. What I wanted to show you today is the, the new workflows that we enable of this, now that we've added things like editing and committing source control directly from the product. All right. So we're kind of a unified map of the world here. Yeah. Yeah? And we, we resisted doing this for quite a long time. Yeah. Because People ask us, oh, I want to edit in DDT, I want to edit in MAP. And we thought, well, we don't want to make another IDE, because the world does not need one of those. Right, right. Um, but people kept on asking. And I mean, we've been around for 10 years now. This is our 10-year anniversary. And what we've realized is that the HPC workflow is unique. In a typical like, enterprise environment, management can mandate that everybody uses the same IDE and the same project structure, and they do all the same stuff. They can do and that. that fundamentally doesn't work in HPC. You've got scientists from a range of different fields all collaborating together. You've got support staff who have to work with them. Um, and then you have you know, system admins who are looking after the cluster. So you can't say everyone has to work in the same way. Right. So a typical example of how Forge would work in this situation. You have a user who has written his, his wave equation code we're going to look at. Um, and He's not getting the performance he wanted to, so he's recorded a map file, which is very easy, the linear map we've seen in other demos, yeah. and he's sent it to the performance guy who's going to have a look. Okay, so we can load it up here. You can log directly into remote clusters from our remote client now on your MacBook or whatever, so you don't actually need to be physically present or popping the files around from user directory and stuff like that yeah, anymore. Yeah. Here we have the report file. Yeah. Now this is an OpenMP program. Um, in the 5.0 versions of MAP, we now have open, full OpenMP support, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for. Yeah. So we're going to see a bit of that here today. Um, and the first thing our intrepid performance analyst sees here is, wow, there's a huge amount of gray up there. OK, gray is overhead. That's time that's just being wasted on the cores. OK, yeah? I'm with you. The dark green color we're seeing is the main thread compute time. That's without any OpenMP happening at all. That's also basically a waste of time. Uh, the good, the light green, the sort of power, yeah. that's yeah. like 18%. So you can see, yeah, this isn't performing well. Right. And in fact, MAP's already taken him exactly to the reason why it's not performing well down here. Most of the time it's being spent here doing this swap arrays line, just copying data back and forth on the main thread. Okay. Well, so he looks at this and he says, well, you know, you're copying the data. Come on, this is a C program guy. You don't need to, you can just swap the pointers. So we'll right. do that instead. And you can just edit it right in inside map now and try okay. this idea out. He doesn't need to go and find another editor. Because sometimes when you just want to do a small fix, you can do it here. We're not saying stop using Vi because Vi is the one true editor, sure. um, not, not Emacs. But you can make the changes without having to come out of your, out of your zone. It's right. about keeping concentrated on what you're doing. Yes. So he makes this little change here and saves it. And you can build this as well. There we go. Yeah. So now it's going to close that down and record a new, a new version doing the same thing again. But now we want to see it running with, um, with the changes in. Yeah. So off it goes. Yeah. And it's running happily along. The nice thing about being able to edit directly in the tool as well is that if you have an allocation on the cluster, yeah. um, you don't need to cancel that allocation and come out again and then wait for your new job to be submitted. Because you can do it quickly here now, you can do it while your allocation is still running, mm. which the sysadmin might not like, but for you it's a very efficient way to work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now the problem for our, our, our performance analyst here, oh no, error validation check failed. So it's gone faster, but he's broken it somehow. Yes. Now, we don't need to go back and reason with it, we need a debugger. Happily, there's one built in. Oh. Switch over to the debugger. It's already set up, configured to reproduce exactly what happened before, but under the debugger control now. Yeah. 
And here we are, it's the same familiar interface, but now it's City Bugger that's taking control of it. And the code he was working on is just up here. There we go, there's a new code. So we can just run straight to here. So I'd have a look to see what's happening. Uh, one of the things you might want to do is to visualize these arrays. Um, maybe if he's interested in specifically what's happening here, you can just say, okay, I'm gonna put a trace point in. This right. is something we've had in DDC for a while. He'll do it in the offline mode. Um, they'll just track how those values are changing over time. So if we let that run for a couple of iterations, we can have a look at the output here. We see, oh ho, they're the same, the same values. So in fact, what's happening here is that we're not was was copying, but we've we've messed up the swapping. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see instantly with the power of the debugger that you need to, you know, you're copying the the new values to the values, but then the old value is not being swapped all the way around. You've got to cycle the buffers right. instead right. of swapping them. So you can find that, you can fix it, then you can go and profile it again and get your win. There you go. Huh. So it's really about enabling this kind of workflow and taking out as much of the, the distractions as right. possible. Right, right. Just uh, getting out of the way, right? Yeah, get okay. out of the way and let the job get done. Very nice.